Tens of thousands of people in Bhopal, India, have died as a result of a massive leak of poisonous gas in 1982 at the hands of Dow Chemical. This became known as the worst industrial disaster in human history. And the fight for justice to these victims and the survivors is at the doors of the Department of Justice today. Now, the disaster highlighted how the DOJ is literally blocking foreign legal systems from taking action against U.S. corporations and allowing them to get away with crimes against humanity. So here's what happened. On December 3rd, 1984, the people of Bhopal were awakened just after midnight to screams of pain and clouds of poisonous gas stemming from a leak at a Union Carbide plant. One survivor, Champa Devi Chukla, said breathing the gas felt like somebody had filled our bodies up with red chilies, and by morning, the streets were piled high with bodies. Victims died in agony, coughing and vomiting. Women miscarried as they ran in terror through the streets. Others were crushed to death by panicked people and livestock. And according to the Indian Council for Medical Research, half a million people were harmed in that disaster. And at least 3,000 people died that single night. Some estimates suggest as many as nearly 10,000 people died just in the first two weeks. And another 8,000 have died of diseases like cancer and respiratory problems in the years since. Now, activists and survivors are still struggling for justice for what's considered history's worst industrial disaster. Now, under a 1989 settlement, survivors received only about $500 each, and Union Carbide was absolved of any responsibility despite evidence that it repeatedly cut corners on safety. And in 1999, Dow Chemical purchased Union Carbide, hampering the quest for justice. Now, activists say the U.S. Department of Justice is protecting Dow from being forced to appear before India's courts on manslaughter charges. And on May 15th, the International Campaign for Justice in Bhopal launched a WhiteHouse.gov petition demanding demanding that the DOJ stop standing in the way of justice. The petition received over 6,000 signatures in just four days, but needs 100,000 signatures to receive a response from the Obama administration. And today, I'm joined by Rachna Dingra, who co-leads the Bhopal Group for Information and Action. And I began by asking her to explain the charges facing Dow. Check it out. Union Carbide Corporation USA, who has been facing charges of culpable homicide uh, since 1992, has decided, uh, manslaughter, has decided not to show up. They just have not showed up. And that this was the case with Warren Anderson also, who was the CEO of Union Carbide Corporation, who recently passed away last year as a free man. And... A Dow Chemical Company, which bought over Union Carbide in 2001, is also facing several uh, cases in India. They are facing cases for uh, cleanup of the contamination. Uh, they are facing cases for paying more compensation to people who died as a result of the disaster and who suffered injuries. And most importantly, uh, Bhopal courts have sent three notices four notices to Dow Chemical to appear in the ongoing criminal case against Union Carbide in which they are being asked that why won't you make your 100% subsidiary appear in the Bhopal court and they have ignored all notices in fact in fact Department of Justice, who is supposed to, of the U.S. government, who is supposed to serve these notices to Dow Chemical, has not really served any of, of these notices. So we not only are fighting this corporation that is based in U.S., but we are fighting the U.S. government also, which is totally helping this corporation that is uh, facing that is face, that is facing charges in this country. Right, and this obviously raises the question: I mean, how is the Department of uh, justice blocking the Indian legal system. Do Indian courts actually have any jurisdiction um, over U.S. corporations? Yes. Uh, uh, it's a very good question. Yes, there is jurisdiction. Um, uh, uh, so between India and U.S., there is a treaty called Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty. And that treaty was specifically made for this purpose that if there is a foreign accused living in, whether it is in India or in U.S., and it's wanted uh, by the Indian courts, then under this treaty, Indian, Indian courts, uh, through the Indian government, and then to the U.S. government can request this person to be, uh, the notice to be sent so that this person can come and appear. So um, through following that treaty that the U.S. and India has, the four notices have been sent by the Bhopal court uh, to the Department of Justice. And Department of Justice has only responded 
to those one of those notices and uh, and they have not really given any reason why they are not serving that that chemical and repeatedly we have seen that in the, in this treaty this is a mutual legal assistance treaty so they are supposed to assist each other and here what we see is that Uh, Department of Justice assisting Dow and not assisting Government of India in uh, making sure that Dow appears here. Right, and you know, Chachna, your story specifically is really interesting. Um, tell our viewers and listeners how did you learn about the Bhopal disaster, and why did you decide to move to India uh, to help the survivors? So I heard about the uh, I'd heard about the Bhopal disaster when I was young. We had studied it in school, but to me, like to most people, to me, the Bhopal disaster had, had uh, was probably over in '84. I heard about the disaster again in 2000 when the Bhopal in uh, Bhopal survivors had come to uh, Michigan. to protest against the merger between carbide and dow chemical i was a student at that time uh, and that is when as a student organization i heard about it and that's when i found out that things in bhopal were actually worse that nothing had been resolved that people were still sick and people were still dying due to the result of the disaster and that there was contamination uh, which no one talked about or, or knew and and at the same time Uh, at, at the same time, I got um, an offer. I went to the business school and I got an offer uh, to work. And my client happened to be Dow Chemical uh, at that time. And I thought I would work with them and see if I could bring a change from being in the inside. And I did that for two years, and I realized that you know corporations, or well, how much ever they talk about corporate social responsibility, that they do not. They do not have uh, a, they, they, they do not have a heart or a soul. Their only allegiance is to bottom line profit. So that is when uh, you know I quit that job and I moved to Bhopal for the first time and I decided to be part of the struggle that has been going on for many years for justice and a life of dignity. You've obviously done a lot of really great work to get the voices of these survivors heard. As someone who works so closely um, with the community there. How does Bhopal continue to suffer um, today as a result of this tragedy? Uh, like I said earlier, this was not something that started and ended in '84. It is an ongoing disaster. Uh, so far, uh, so far, more than 25,000 people have died as a result of the uh, illnesses caused due to the disaster. There is a, a big population, uh, more than 100,000 people, that are still chronically sick. Because we do not know how to treat people who have been exposed uh, by the gas, because the company refuses to reveal uh, the, the toxicology of the gases. So there is a health disaster, there is a uh, environment disaster that no one talks, uh, no, a lot, not a lot of people know about. And this actually has nothing to do with the gas disaster. This is about thousands of tons of toxic waste that Union Carbide left behind uh, uh, after they abandoned in '84, and they had. Dumped a lot of toxic waste in and around the factory, uh, in the communities where more than 50,000 people live now. So the groundwater of these communities have been ha heavily contaminated by, uh, you know, by lead, mercury, and several or uh, uh, several chemicals that cause cancer, brain damage, birth defects in children. So we have a population of about 50,000 people that. Drank contaminated water, and there are several children who are being born with birth defects. Um, you know, so the, these are just the some of the health impacts that we are talking about, and the impact to environment. But also, if you look at it legally, 25,000 people died, and so many people continue to suffer, and there is not a single corporation. Single individual that has paid for this, uh, 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 you know, uh, for this travesty. So uh, corporations like Dow Chemical and Union Carbide uh, continue to run free, continue to do business uh, freely, while they have killed and maimed and injured uh, thousands and thousands of people in in Bhopal. We are. Doing a petition in which we would like people in U.S. to sign. It's a U.S. government petition uh, which asks basically that Department of Justice stop shielding Dow Chemical. And we have this petition on the WhiteHouse.gov site. So if people are interested, please please sign and ensure that there is an end to this 
two-year-old tragedy that still continues in Bhopal. Well, the search for justice continues. Thank you so much. Thank you.